So, you've connected an extra drive for more storage. But where is it? See, it's my usual drive. Where the hell is my new drive? It's not always straightforward, is it? Hello, I'm Calm Cal. Welcome to another video. The fifth in my budget build series, adding more storage. If you've already added your drive, fast forward towards the end. But firstly, I want to show everybody else how to add a hard disk drive to this budget build. Let's start with an unboxing. If you're unsure what storage to buy, check out this comparison video. It has modern solid state drives, modern hard disk drives, and old ones too. Backing. It. And here we go. Just the hard drive, nicely sealed. Toshiba P300, 2 terabyte. What we don't get, screws. Okay, so you have to remember that with your motherboard box, you've got some screws and these should fit and help us fit that drive into the machine. Also, you need the power cord and also the SATA cables that come with your motherboard box as well. Right, let's get to it. Oh, and a screwdriver. Oh, and what else you might need is a bloody torch. <laughs> With the hard drive itself, you've got the connections. They fit at the back of the case. And this nice clean bit will fit at the front of the case. And it just slides in, he says. And what you have to do is marry those screws up to those holes there. If you can see them, I'll put a little arrow on the video when I edit it. So, I have actually got, on this side, a fan. How am I going to get a screwdriver in there? Luckily with this case, it is all screws. So you can tighten these by hand. But, is my hand going to fit in there? So when you buy parts for a build itself, Make sure you look at all these things before you start building because if I didn't have that in the way, the fan, it would be a lot easier. So you'd have to sort out which part to put in first when you've got multiple items. This runs through a SATA port, so you have to find out which one of these ports it'll be sharing the information with because on my other computer it's the top port, so when I connect things, I always connect things to number one, number two, number three, and obviously number four comes last. So I'm hoping that when I connect it to the first SATA port, that there's going to be no configuration problems. I've just got started these two off, put them in tight, make sure they're all secure, then unloosen them so I can get these other two ones in. So with this one, I had to take the front off, but I just had my hand at a funny angle like this to get the back one in and then this one was a bit tricky so what I decided to do was just stick it through the fan like that and it managed to get in in the end make sure you put all four in because obviously this drive has moving parts it does 7200 rpms this one spins at if you're going to play games I would have a 7200 rpm drive if you can have photos and things like that, or music, then a slower drive is fine. Right, so now I'm just trying to sort out a power lead to power the drive. Obviously you need power, and also obviously you need a, a data or SATA cable. So I'm just trying to figure out which one's the best ones to do. Obviously all the power leads look like this. So this one has got three on here, so if I put that one through, if I have another drive, it can power from the same cable. This one here has extra, so it actually has a Molex cable on there and it looks like another fan header. So I'm going to save that one, and obviously this one is for your graphics card. Some graphics cards just have 8 pin, some have a combination of 8 and 6, so that's for the graphics card, so we'll save that one as well. Obviously we can't use that one, so 
I'm just going to feed that one through. With the SATA cables, you'll find when you open your motherboard, you might have quite a few, depending on the quality of the board itself. Sometimes when you pay more, obviously you get more. But usually there's at least a couple of leads. But with the SATA cables, there's usually some flat ones, and then you get a handy one, where when you plug it into drives, it is at a 90 degree angle. So obviously when that plugs into the back of the drive, there's no pressure from a straight cable would give you, trying to bend it down against the back of the case. This comes plugged in and it's straight down. And then you can feed it through the case. So it's just something to consider. Maybe even if you've got quite a few drives that you're putting in, maybe to buy some extra leads that have this 90 degree angle. A long line and then a 90 degree angle. So these can only be plugged in one way because it's exactly the same here. You notice it's got a little, you can hear that, little prong there, which secures it. So obviously we have to match up the oblong and the 90 degree angle with the same thing on the motherboard. So we know that it fits in this way. I hope you can see this. Right, with this motherboard, there's nothing secure in the back of the board because the screw is there so what I'm going to do is just put my torch down I'm going to plug it in and then just secure the back of the board and hopefully I can see what I'm doing no I can't there we go a little click in right so I'm going to feed this through the back of the case so it then connects up with the drive right so this is the back of the hard drive so Obviously we've got our SATA cable that we need to plug in, so that will fit in this bit here. Obviously there's a 90 degree angle um, that we need to plug into. Obviously this has got a 90 degree angle here, so we can marry it up to. And also, the power cable is exactly the same. Capture that. Try and capture that. See it's got... A long line with a little lip that goes off at a 90 degree angle. Obviously that fits into this bit here with a 90 degree angle this side. So I'm going to connect these. I'm going to show you that because the camera's in the bloody way. <laughs> okay. Right back. So that's them both in then peoples. Tidied the cables up a slight little bit. Well, I'm happy with that. It's not going to go anywhere. Do you want to make sure that no cables are actually touching the back of the drive? Obviously there's going to be some heat coming from those, so make sure that the wires are well away. I'm going to have to tie some of them back as well from the rest of the cables. With these power supplies, you get different versions. You get fully modular, where you can take out all of the cables. You get semi-modular, where you can take out some of the cables, but not all of them. And then you just get where all the cables are connected and you can't take any of them off. So if you want a clean build, maybe consider something like that. All right, so all I need to do really is tidy these cables up. I was hoping to put them back underneath the drive cage, but because of the heat from the hard disk drive, I mean, it'd be okay if it was an SSD, but because this has got moving parts, it doesn't just spin underneath. Um, but they do generate a bit of heat, these these drives, so I'm not going to put these underneath it. What I'm going to do is just try and, try and bunch them up and then put them on this side. So, there are different types of cables that you can buy. You do get some that come with the motherboards. You can get them all different gearish colours as well if you want to. But what I'd advise you to do is use these type, these plastic type of tyres rather than the ones that usually come with these power supplies or their little, little cable tyres and they've got metal in them don't use them, take them out if there's any in your case at all, holding wires or anything like that replace them with these because they do deteriorate and they can damage your computer over time that is In the Cortana box, type 
Disk Management. A list of all the drives will be displayed. It will show your new drive as not initialized. Windows 10 knows what kind of drive you have connected, so we'll pre-select the correct options. It also knows the size of the drive. Click on OK and the drive will be put online. The drive shows as unallocated now, so right click on the space, then select New Simple Volume. The wizard will do the hard work, so just click Next. Next we have the option to select part of the drive. I want to use the whole drive as one, not split it up, so I'm selecting Next. We can select the drive letter from this next screen. Change this if you want, or you can remove this entirely for now if you wish, but select Next. You can now name the drive here, so I'm going to amend this to P300 2 terabytes. Perform a quick format is already pre selected, so just click Next and then Finish. It takes a few seconds whilst it performs the format, and there we have it. The new drive is ready. Click the X in the top right hand corner, and the new drive is displayed in the list. Right click on the drive letter, left click on Properties when the menu comes up, and there we have it a nice new clean drive. My name is Cal, I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos, don't forget to like, subscribe etc etc, have a good morning, afternoon or good evening, farewell till next time, see you later.